What is going on everybody? Today I will be responding to your guys college football hot takes. We do this video basically every week now and it is one of my favorite videos to make because I like interacting with other college football fans. So if you guys want to be a part of this video then just look out for my post on the YouTube community page because we will ask for you guys hot takes there and you guys can leave your best hot takes. But before we get into reading these hot takes let me remind you guys to like the video and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football, then you'll love this channel because we upload daily college football content and we basically cover everything on this channel. So definitely consider subscribing and also consider joining my Discord server down in the description below. But without further ado, let's get into the video. This first person says, there is too much storm in the field. I don't have anything against it, but it's supposed to be only for legendary moments. The only moment in the last few years that I think was worthy of a field storm was when Tennessee beat Alabama for the first time in 15 years. After years of misery, I see field storming way too often. I see it for some random group of five games and for a win that was expected. People doing it too much makes it lose its value. I completely agree with you on this hot take. I really think storming the field should only happen a few times a season, maybe even once or twice. But it's getting to the point where we see teams storming the field basically every week. An example of storming the field becoming annoying is when Colorado fans stormed the field multiple times at the start of last season. There's absolutely no reason to storm the field after beating a team you're already favored to beat by double digits. Colorado stormed the field after beating Colorado State and Nebraska. And like you said, the more it happens, the more annoying it gets. Storming the field should be for iconic moments in college football. But now it just happens all the time, so there's nothing much to say about this. But I do think it really devalues what storming the field means the more teams do it. But at least the fans are passionate about their team, so I guess that is a good thing. But it does happen way too often, in my opinion. This next person says Arizona actually has a decent shot at the playoffs next year. Think about it, they're one of the favorites for the new Big 12. They have proven that they are capable of defeating other top opponents in the conference, and if they can win it, they have a good chance at the 12-team playoffs. Now, Arizona will be guaranteed to make the playoffs if they do win the Big 12, and I definitely think despite losing a decent amount of talent and losing their head coach, they still have some young talent on the team returning. And of course, they have one of the most dangerous quarterback-receiver duos in all of college football, and I'm talking about Fida and McMillan. They will be returning next season. The defense should also be solid, and the Big 12 doesn't really have a dominant team, so I think Arizona could definitely win the Big 12. And there's not much debating about this. Arizona is definitely one of those top teams in the Big 12, and they already beat one of those top teams in the Big 12 last season in the Alamo Bowl. And with Texas and Oklahoma gone, I think people should really be high on this Arizona team to win the Big 12 but I can surely guarantee that they will finish in the top four of the Big 12. This next person says, maybe not this year, but at some point USC will fire Lincoln Riley. I could see Lincoln Riley getting fired if nothing changes for USC football within the next couple years, but I really like the work that has been done in the coaching staff. USC has a revamped defensive coaching staff, and they really signed an elite defensive coaching staff, and I do feel like this USC team has some positives going forward, and it does seem like Lincoln Riley is finally putting in work to make the defense better. But we will have to wait and see how everything plays out these next couple of years. But I still expect USC to be good and get the defense cleaned up a little bit. They might not have a good defense, but even if they have an average defense, then I think they could still definitely compete with most teams. Kind of like how they were two seasons ago. But we'll see what happens within the next couple of years because the Big Ten is going to be a different type of competition. But it actually might force USC to adapt and play defense. But I wouldn't be very shocked to see Lincoln Riley get fired sometime soon, but I don't expect it to happen after next season. This next person says Michigan will beat Alabama in the playoffs again, and a group of five team will make it to the national championship game. I honestly wouldn't count out Alabama and Michigan to make a run in the playoffs. I know they both have tons of question marks heading into 2024, but Kalen DeBoer is the head coach of Alabama, and he has been a winner everywhere he has coached. But I think he has potential to do great things at Alabama, maybe even as soon as year one. And I know Michigan lost a bunch of talent, but let's not remember how deep their roster is. They will also be returning some All-Americans on defense. I expect Michigan to still have a really good defense and one of the best in the country. But we'll see how the offense does in 2024. But I think Donovan Edwards will be a beast at running back. And we could very well see Michigan playing Alabama in the playoffs. And it could be like a 10 seed versus 7 seed type of game. With the 12 team playoffs, many things are possible. And something crazy that can happen is a group of 5 team making a national championship run. I don't know if there's any teams with enough talent to make a natty run, so I highly doubt we will see a group of five team make the national championship. But if any group of five team can make a playoff run, then I'd say watch out for Boise State or Tulane. But I just don't see it happening next season. This next person says, 
It sucks to say, but it seems like with the direction college football is taking, it seems to be forming into a minor league system for the NFL. College football has really become more about money as time goes on. NIL is evolving. Conference realignment is really changing the game. There's a lot of concerns going forward, and I hope they don't take it too far. But the atmosphere of college football is unmatched to me, and it's going to take a lot to push me away from this sport. And it would take a lot of screwing up for me to not enjoy watching college football anymore. I'm actually very excited for the next college football season, more than I've ever been, and I think the conference realignment changes are fine. I still think college football will always be 100 times better than the NFL. So we'll see what happens as time goes by. But the NFL is just way too predictable and boring to me. And college football is just on a different level in my opinion. And I'm really not going to complain about college football really changing. Because I'm excited to see all the new transfers playing at different teams. And I'm excited to see all the new games that we will have within the next couple of years. And the 12 team playoffs will be very fun to watch. This next person says, I think that Oregon does amazing and plays Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship. I think a big majority of college football fans can agree that the Big Ten Championship is most likely going to be Ohio State and Oregon. And this may not be a hot take, but it's crazy to think that in 2024, we could see a world where Oregon and Ohio State are playing in a Big Ten Championship. And I also think it will be Oregon and Ohio State definitely playing in that Big Ten Championship. But I'd say watch out for Michigan, Penn State, and USC as well. Those three teams have so many question marks but they still have a lot of successful past seasons and recruiting success. But no teams have as much positives heading forward like Ohio State and Oregon do. If Michigan wasn't losing so much talent, I'd be convinced that they make the Big Ten Championship. But they lost a bunch of talent on offense, so we'll see what happens. But Oregon and Ohio State are both returning a decent amount of talent on top of having a ton of success in the transfer portal and recruiting. Oregon versus Ohio State is going to be legendary next season. We could either see this game once, or we could see this game twice, or believe it or not, with the 12-team playoff starting, we could actually see this game three times next season. Imagine they play each other in the regular season, then in the Big Ten Championship, and then in the 12-team playoffs. It's definitely a possibility Ohio State could have the best defense in the country, while Oregon could possibly have the best offense in the country. But on the other hand, Chip Kelly could help elevate that Ohio State offense. And we all know Dan Lanning is a defensive-minded head coach, and the Ducks are returning a lot on defense. So they are both national title contenders in my eyes, and they should be great on both sides of the ball. I can't wait for this game. It's definitely going to be a fun game. But this next person says Clemson will lose to Virginia Tech in 2024. And I would not be surprised to see Clemson lose to Virginia Tech. Because that's going to be the ultimate trap game for Clemson. And Virginia Tech will have that game at home near the end of this season. Clemson will play Louisville at home. And then the following week, they go on the road to play Virginia Tech. That is the ultimate trap game. I'm pretty high on this Virginia Tech team. They have a solid quarterback returning. And their offense should be really good next season. They ended last season very impressively, and they are returning the most amount of talent in all of college football. While Clemson has been slowly going downhill over the last couple of years, we'll see who I have winning this game when I do my schedule predictions for these two teams, but right now I think I am leaning towards Virginia Tech beating Clemson, but we'll see. I'm definitely excited to get into previewing the ACC schedules, but this next person says Tulane could be a playoff contender after hiring the Troy coach and recruiting Ty Thompson. Nobody is talking about them at all. Plus, SMU leaves for the ACC, and UTSA loses Frank Harris and a lot of talent. They just have to worry about Memphis. Other than that, smooth sailing to a possible playoff berth. First of all, you probably already know this, but Ty Thompson wasn't a recruit. He was actually a pickup out of the transfer portal for Tulane. But I really do like this hot take. I'm glad you're giving Tulane some recognition, and you were pretty straight to the point with this hot take. I completely agree with you. I think Tulane is probably my favorite to win the American Championship, and I think they could very well make the playoffs. But I do also really like Boise State out of the Mountain West. But if we are just talking about the teams in the American Conference, then SMU will be gone, which makes it much easier for Tulane. And I know Tulane lost a bunch of production, but they brought in Ty Thompson, like you said. And they brought in two very solid receivers out of the transfer portal as well. And I still think they will be very solid next season, and possibly even better. I do really like Memphis too, but the defense is still a pretty big concern. And also, I'd say watch out for South Florida in the American Conference. They are returning a bunch of talent. And they have a lot of momentum heading into next season. South Florida actually went from 1-11 to 7-6 and in just one season with the new head coach. And next season could be a pretty big step up for South Florida. And I'm not very high on UTSA either. And right now, I still can't count out Tulane to win the American Championship. Right now, the top three teams in the American seem like Tulane, South Florida, and Memphis. But Tulane seems like the obvious number one. And I think they're the best bet to win the American Championship. Definitely with SMU leaving. So if I had to pick one team out of the American Conference right now, I would pick Tulane. 
I'm going to read one last hot take, and this person says, Notre Dame is a top five team. The only teams I'd put ahead of them are Texas, Oregon, Ohio State, and Georgia. Maybe Ole Miss, but I think Notre Dame has the defensive edge over them, even with all their portal additions. And they also have a better run game with Ole Miss losing Judkins. Michigan loses too much. Bama is going to be a whole different team. And Missouri will not have as good of an offensive identity as they lose Cody Schrader. I think there's absolutely no doubt that Notre Dame will be a top 10 team next year. I really don't know about top 5 though. If we are talking about preseason rankings, Ole Miss and Missouri both only lost two games last season and won a New Year's 6 bowl game and have a lot of positives heading forward. I think I could see Notre Dame being ranked 6, but I think Ole Miss is going to be very highly ranked because of how much success they had last season on top of Jackson Dart returning and the additions made in the transfer portal. It will also depend on how much they do drop Alabama and Michigan in the rankings as well. But I definitely think Notre Dame should be ranked above Michigan and Alabama. Notre Dame should be ranked ahead of Missouri too. But I wouldn't be surprised to see Missouri ranked ahead of Notre Dame either. But I think the obvious teams that will be ranked from 5-7 to seven are Ole Miss, Notre Dame, and Missouri. Notre Dame should be a top 7 team for sure. And I'd even put them at number 6. But they very well could be ranked 5. So I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens, but Notre Dame definitely looks good heading into next season, and the offense could be more explosive with the additions that they made in the transfer portal. I am definitely excited to see what Notre Dame does next season, but if you are asking me, I would rank them at 6 right behind Ole Miss. But anyways, that's going to do it for the video. Be sure to like the video, and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football, then you will love this channel, because we upload daily college football content, and we basically cover everything on this channel. So definitely consider subscribing and also consider joining my Discord server down in the description below. But that's going to do it guys and peace out.